Most people think SEO is complicated and you gotta pay some expert to get you to rank, but they're gatekeeping. The reality is, is SEO is simple to understand and easy to implement. Easy enough that I'm gonna show you a few things right now that you can do to help get your website to rank that you can do even if you have no prior experience. This video today is sponsored by Rank Math, which is my favorite SEO plugin for WordPress websites. And we are gonna be using that tool a bit today, but not only that tool. And even if you're not using Rank Math and you're using a different plugin or no plugin at all to do these things, these same exact strategies that I'm about to show you are all going to help you rank better. Okay, so first we wanna make sure that we have an SEO plugin installed. I'm gonna use Rank Math, like I said. Now I've already got mine installed and active here on my website, but that's where we find it under plugins. Now I'm here and Rank Math has a lot of tools and honestly there are so many things we can do for SEO. So today I'm gonna to focus on a few really simple ones that are going to make a real difference. Hack number one is we're gonna change the way that our titles and the descriptions for the pages on our website show up in search results. Now, Google and other search engines aren't always going to use the meta descriptions and titles that we put in here but we wanna give ourselves the best opportunity to actually get the click. So let's see how we can check out our title and how Rank Math can help us do this a little bit better. First of all, here I'm in a blog post. This is from one of my websites. And you can see the title at the top is really long. Now, titles are really important. It used to be for blog posts we would say, just have a title that's reasonably descriptive of the content, but that's also a little bit interesting, right? It maybe you should stand out. It's more and more important today that your content stands out, that the title, that the description really stands out. That's because your article is competing against so much other content today. It's competing against posts on Reddit. It's competing against YouTube videos. And honestly, we wanna be able to drive traffic from other places, including Pinterest, including um, Discover, Google Discover. We wanna be able to drive traffic through um, people using ChatGPT and other AI models that are gonna cite your content as a source. And so having a good title that shows up is gonna be really valuable. Now, obviously, I can just change my title here, but one of the things that's gonna help me is using Rank Math tools. So here, when I'm editing my blog post, there's these two boxes up at the top, and the one on the left is a bunch of Rank Math stuff for this blog post, right? And I can see this preview here. The preview is showing me, essentially, what it's gonna be shown to the search engines, what the search engines are gonna um, look at and put together to show when it shows up in any sort of search result. And that's what's gonna be pulled and used by all those places that we just talked about. Now we can edit that snippet here, or I can look at it over here on the right by clicking there and this preview snippet editor. I like this because it just shows here at the top, this is what it's gonna look like in Google. This is what it's gonna look like on Facebook or Twitter. There's not an image for this. And so it's like, give me an image that'll work, which is also a really valuable thing to do. But for the you know Google and other search engines, also Bing, which is number two and on the rise, this is essentially what it's gonna look like. Notice my title is way too long. Now, first aid in the wilderness is kind of the key for this blog post, but notice how it's cutting off a ton of it. And I can see that by looking at the tool right here. Next, if I want to, I can leave the title of the blog post exactly as it is but I can choose something else to be the title that gets shown in search engines. So I could put something that's shorter, maybe a little bit snappier, right? Now, they're gonna give me a little bit of a score. They're gonna tell me, you know, longer is good, but keep it under 60, which is in line with what we've been teaching here for a long time. Now here I can look at the permalink. The permalink for this, this is the URL that's used for the blog post. It's good for that permalink to use the keywords from the blog post, like first aid, wilderness. Those are two keywords and first aid in the wilderness being kind of the keyword for this article. So that's good that that's here. It doesn't need to be nearly this long. Now this post has been up for a long time. And so changing the permalink usually wouldn't be a good idea, but watch this. First aid in the wilderness. Let's just go ahead and remove everything else. Now the permalink is gonna be different. And then here it's pulling a description. This is just pulling the very beginning of the blog post. Well, that's fine but it's maybe not ideal. Maybe I could put something there that's just a little bit better. And I could use AI for this. Rank Math provides 750 free content AI credits, even in the free version. So we could do that, but for now I can also just go run the blog post through ChatGPT and have it give me a nice little short summary that's under 160 characters. Why don't we go do that real quick? So I'll just copy all that text. Let me go to ChatGPT. 
And I just paste all that content there. And here's the meta description. Discover essential wilderness first aid and survival skills for hikers and campers. Learn how to handle emergencies, build a reliable first aid kit, treat outdoor injuries, and stay safe on your next adventure in the great outdoors. That's a better little description, right? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that in. And we're gonna paste that here. Oh, it's still too long. ChatGPT isn't always great about sticking to the 160 characters. All right, even shorter. There we go. So that's gonna be short enough. And so I'm able to update my title, my description, and the permalink right here and get, you know, rank math to help me make sure that I'm keeping it the right length. Okay, the second hack is internal linking. It's really valuable to link from one post on your website to other posts or important pages on your website. And while doing this manually makes a lot of sense, if you have a strategy for the content you're creating, if you've already got a lot of content on your website, that can be a lot of work. Rank Math actually has a tool that's built in for this, and it's called Link Suggestions. To find this, we just go to the normal blog post settings where you can change the, the slug, you can change just like the general stuff, like the categories. So here, we're gonna set some categories. We've got first aid, perfect, and then tags, we'll tag it as uh, wilderness, Survival. Okay, so we got a couple of tags there. Now here, if I scroll down further, there's link suggestions. Now, in order for link suggestions to work, we do need to go through and we need to specify which posts on the website are pillar content. Now, pillar content for your website is the, web, is the content that's like the most important. It's the main stuff we wanna point people to. That can be posts, that can be pages on your website. So, we're gonna go to another blog post, just so that I can show you how this works. Here's a post that's essential items for your first aid kit. Like, this could be a pillar piece of content about first aid kits. So for this, first of all, I'm gonna categorize it as first aid. But also, if I go to the, just the rank math stuff that we looked at a little bit earlier, I can check this box, this post is pillar content. So now when I reload this draft over here for this first aid in the wilderness survival skills, I can scroll down and I go to the link suggestions and it's got a recommendation for me. Then I can easily check the, or click on the little clipboard and that's gonna copy the URL. So then I can go into my blog post and I can choose a spot and link to that article. It's a helpful tool. There are other plugins that do a really good job of helping suggest where links could go in your content or what articles you could link to. The idea here though is that we wanna keep people on our website a lot longer. We wanna help them find the resources that they need when they come to the website. And so linking between pieces of content is a great way to help people just flow through your website to the content that's gonna be most helpful, most valuable for them, and obviously, keep them on your website a lot longer. In the end, we're gonna have kind of a hub and spoke system where those pillar pieces of content are hubs and a lot of the other pieces of content are spokes, like in a wheel, and they're all gonna point to that really important pillar content. And that's the content that's gonna drive the majority of the monetization for your website, or that should. And so if you do it right, every single post on your website should link to another piece of important pillar content. And maybe a couple other pieces of not pillar content but that are on the same topic and covering different aspects of it. That's also gonna help build that topical map for your website to show the topics that you have authority in just in the content that you have. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to optimize our images for SEO. This is one of the things that most content creators on the web overlook. We often go get the images we need for our website, we just upload them to the website and don't think twice about them and put them in the blog posts that we need there is a better way to help optimize your images for SEO. For image SEO specifically, if people are looking for images specifically, making sure that the file names, that the alt text, that the descriptions for those images are all optimized for SEO is incredibly valuable. It can also be really helpful just for regular content, not just image SEO as well. Now, alt text is also really valuable and helpful for people who are disabled and using your website. So if they're using a screen reader, that alt text is really helpful. So it is an accessibility thing, but it's also an SEO thing. Now it's a small SEO boost, and so it's probably not worth the time if you have hundreds of images across your website to go through one by one and do this. But Rank Math has a tool that can help us. Here, there's the image SEO tool. I just turn that on. And then here I can add missing alt attributes. And so it's gonna take whatever the file name for the image is, and it's gonna just use that as alt text like Sunrise at Maldives. I'm adding missing title attributes, uh, image caption. I'm not gonna add the caption, but the description we can do. Title, we'll do title casing. This we'll just leave as sentence casing. The description will leave sentence casing. And then one thing that Rank Math doesn't do is it doesn't go through and actually compress the image size for all of your images. That's another ranking factor because it's gonna help make your website run a lot faster 
if your image files aren't so big. Again, it can be a pain to go through every single image you're gonna upload to your website and um, compress it using some third-party tool. Like we used to do this in, with Photoshop, you could do it with, um, there's some online tools and things, but you don't need to do that. There are plugins that'll do it for you. Imagify is a plugin that works really well with Rank Math. In fact, specifically right here, it's saying, go ahead and install that plugin now, and it'll automatically go through and optimize all your images to compress them so the file sizes are only as big as they need to be, and it's gonna make your website load a lot faster. Next is schema markup. Schema markup is one of those things that helps search engines understand what the content on your website is. So for any particular page or post on your website, it's important for search engines to be able to understand what that content is. Now using the free version of Rank Math, which by the way, all of this, you can do all these things. There's so much here that you can do just for free. But by default, it's gonna have one schema type. It's gonna use this article schema and it's gonna apply it to the whole page. Now I can edit it here and it's just gonna say, what type of content is this? It's an article. What's you know, The headline is just gonna pull in the SEO title, which is the one we edited at the beginning. The SEO title isn't necessarily the title of the blog post because you can change it. Same with the description. The keyword that's gonna pull in, and then it's asking what kind of article is it? Is it a news article, a blog post, or another type of article? So we're just gonna put blog post, and then we'll go ahead and save that for this blog post. Now if I have like how-to content or FAQ content, I can have specific schema markup that's made for that. Or if a person, right, I make an about page, and I wanna have the schema markup recognize that this page is about a person, and that way Google gets Google and other search engines get all this information about this person, and so when somebody does a search about that person, it's got all that information well divvied up to be able to make those uh, knowledge cards and all sorts of things that we see on search engines. I can choose FAQ schema here, and then I can add, you know, what are the questions? So it's FAQ, so I add a question, the answer, and then when I'm done with all my questions and answers, I just take this short code that it generated for me and I put it in the block editor, and what it's gonna do is generate a block with all of those FAQs, and they're gonna show up nice on the website, but also they're gonna have the schema markup. Now, how important schema markup is, it's hard to say for sure. I mean, the AIs are getting smarter and smarter to be able to parse this kind of information on their own, but anytime that we can make things a little bit clearer for the computers, it's gonna work a little bit better. So schema markup is one way that we can use a tool like Rank Math to just improve the SEO a little bit. Now we can add schema on our own. It's not that hard to do. You can just add a code block that's got the schema markup. So if I'm writing a blog post here, I can just go to the end of the blog post and I can put in custom HTML and then I can just go generate the schema markup code on my own. There are some websites to do that and this is the one, the technicalseo.com. I've used this one before. And here I can just say, I, I wanna generate schema markup for an article. What type is it? It's a blog post. See, it's the same kind of stuff. What's the URL for it? What's the headline? Um, is there an image that, you know, what's the URL for that image? The author, the author type, the publisher, all that stuff, right? And when I'm done over here on the side, I've got this script, I copy that, I paste it right there. It's not gonna show up, nobody's gonna see it, but it's gonna be on the back end. So Google's gonna be able to see it. It's gonna be there in the content, but it won't be something that's visible to anybody that comes to the website. But we don't need to do that because we're using Rank Math. All right, one more tool that we're gonna talk about is just a brief, quick content audit. When I write a blog post, and I click on here, you probably saw this already. First of all, the focus keyword. It's setting a focus keyword is gonna enable these tools. So first aid in the wilderness is the focus for this article. And so what's it gonna do? It's gonna analyze the basic SEO. It's gonna tell me, okay, you're using it in the title. It's not in your meta description. So, okay, cool, I could fix that. And then it's used in the URL. It appears in the first 10% of the content. So all of these things, right? And then it's telling me like, oh, good. And your content's fairly long, great. Additional stuff. The focus keyword isn't in any of the subheadings. Okay, well, maybe we should put it there. Add an image with the focus keyword as alt text. First aid in the wilderness as some of the alt text for one of my images would be great. This blog post doesn't have any images yet. Keyword density is 0.4, which is low. So the keyword should show up a few more times. Now, we've talked about this in the past and we've used other SEO tools a long time ago and we've said, don't even look at that. It's kind of a joke. I think Rank Math has done a pretty good job. Now. I wouldn't say that all of these things are critical. I wouldn't get too hung up on making sure everything is a green checkbox, but it is worthwhile to just look at this and see how you're doing, right? And if you're seeing a lot of red, 
maybe make some changes. Here, use content AI to optimize the post. Uh, okay, now you're just trying to get me to use the paid features of this tool. Title readability. It says the SEO title doesn't contain a number. Titles that contain numbers do a little bit better in search results. So if I did first aid in the wilderness, five ways to survive, that might do a little bit better. And then content readability, it's saying, I'm not using rich media like images or videos. Those would actually help the blog post. They help with the rankings. They would also just help make the content better. So that's something that needs to be added, honestly, before this blog post gets published. Now, these are just some SEO things that we can do and that, honestly, there are tools like Rank Math that make it really, really easy to do. There are other things that we would wanna do from an SEO standpoint to help make your website more authoritative. We talk about a lot of those in other videos. I've got a video right here that I wanna point you to that's gonna help you with just another list of little things that you can do that are gonna make a difference on your website. That said, if you don't have an SEO plugin on your WordPress site, go try out Rank Math, it's free. Just go give it a try. The cool thing is, is if you turn it on and you just walk through the basic setup, it's going to do all of these things for you. It's gonna walk you through how to do all these. You don't even have to look at all the many, many tools they have available for you. Just go through the setup wizard. It's gonna do it all in a matter of minutes and your site's gonna be way more optimized for SEO than it was before you started. Thanks for joining me today. If you're new to the channel, this is Income School, and we talk a lot about content and business and how we're able to use content to drive traffic, get eyeballs on our businesses, and make money from the content that we create. Got a whole library of content here. I hope that you'll check it out and enjoy it. Um, definitely, definitely do this stuff in this video. It's gonna help you out a bunch. We'll see you all next time.